Sean Cole will kick it off. And we're going to get this thing underway. On senior day in Cleveland, Case a win away from a share of the PAC title. Let's get it going. It's in Johnston's direction. And a short kick fielded around the 15. He'll slice back through the middle before he's dropped at around the 34-yard line. So Johnston will get a quick break. We'll see how soon we see him on the offensive side. And Drew Saxton will come out with a four-wide receiver set and Zach Hall in the backfield. This case offense second in the PAC in points per game, averaging at just over 35 points per contest. And won by a mere touchdown last week against Geneva. Here's Saxton with a quick dump off. Hall out of the backfield. Sprints to the first down before he's dragged down near midfield. We see there Coach Deblak doing a great job of getting his running back, Zach Hall, there isolated on the linebacker, Jermaine Snodgrass. He's going to run about 5'8", 205. And, you know, honestly, his strength is not going to be in coverage. He's more going to be a run stuffer. So kudos to Saxton and Coach Deblak. They're finding the matchup and exploiting it early. And for Drew Saxton, that's enough for 5,000 on his Spartans career. Zeroing in on his second straight 2,000-yard passing season. He is now the fifth Spartan quarterback to get to 5,000 in his career, and he's only a sophomore as Hall gets the give on the ground this time. Second down and about seven to go. 4-3 defense for this Bethany College Bison team. Led at defensive end by the big number six, the senior from Pittsburgh, Chaz Blango. D3Football.com Team of the Week honoree two weeks ago, as well as the PAC Defensive Player of the Week after a big game against CMU. Stretch run, Hall off tackle right. He was on the turf before he lost that football. Blango was in on that tackle, dragging D. Ghost with him. Yeah, just to kind of finish up your point on Blango, if you look at the stat line against Carnegie Mellon, six tackles, three and a half sacks, four and a half tackles for loss, two forced fumbles and an interception. Most people are going to call that a you know season, maybe even a half season's worth of stats, <laughs> and he got it in one afternoon. So all the accolades definitely definitely deserve there for Blango, and you know look for him to kind of be the guy that puts his foot down and really takes a leadership role in this defense today. The interception from a defensive end, quite the cherry on top there too. Third and two from the Bison 46, and a big set. They'll give it up the middle. There's Travis Johnston rumbling to the first down. I think one of the cool things about this offense is every week we've seen a you know some formation or some play call that we haven't seen to this point in the season. So you see kind of a full house backfield there. Almost kind of looks like a triple option look that Geneva you know was pulling out last week. So like we said, Travis Johnson, one of the most versatile, explosive athletes on this team, and Coach Deblak's going to do everything he can to, to make sure he has an impact on this game. Now back to the usual spread we're used to seeing. Hall is in the backfield again, and the Spartans driving on the first drive of this ball game. Bethany won the coin toss, opted to defer. Saxton fakes the give. Screen out to Morgan, slips away from a tackle, stiff arms at the 20 before he's ridden out. Keandre Murphy had to help out on the tackle, a big stiff arm on Danny Gilbert Jr. by the big man, Colt Morgan. I gotta say, I'm kind of surprised. That's that's usually the, the Spartans offense bread and butter down inside the 10 yard line, that tunnel screen there to the wide receiver, but pulling it out early and if you look across the board of the Bethany defense, especially on the back end, they just they don't really have the size to kind of hang with Colt Morgan in that respect. So look for Colt to have a big day and kind of really try and impose his will on these defensive backs. He's 6'5", 215. You're not going to find very many defensive backs in Division Three football that are going to measure up. Hall to the right hip pocket of Saxton, who drops back. Looks over the middle. Mario Rabina loses the football. It's inside the 10. Bethany thinks they've got it, and that would be a costly early turnover. And there's the official word, bison football. 
Hey, if you're Bethany and you want to come in and make a statement early and really kind of throw the first punch here at Case Western, turnovers is going to be a great way to do that. So kudos to the defense. Ball was moving on them, but Ben don't break style, and they're able to force the ball out of Rabina's hands and put the ball in, you know, in their offense's hands and see what they can get going here early against the Spartans. And Bethany and Case, both teams that have been quite good at protecting the football and forcing turnovers on the flip side. They come into today with twin plus eight turnover margins, good for best in the conference. Now we'll get a look at this Bethany offense. Cam Brown in pursuit of Carlin Basin, who's scampering his way near the sticks. Had to get to the 19, looked like he got the 18-yard line. And the senior quarterback tucking and running quickly and outrunning Cameron Brown for an eight-yard gain. It's second and two. Yeah, Basin on the year coming in, if you just look at his gross rushing yards, taking out sack yardage, he's well over 800 yards, so... Pretty impressive from the quarterback position and obviously going to be a big part of the game today. A shovel to Raekwon Wright who gets the edge and the first down before stumbling out of bounds. This is an offense that likes to play outside the numbers because of their aforementioned smaller size. Andrew, they want to stretch the field laterally. Yeah, one thing to look for, and you know, Case Western has a couple injuries on the D-line this week. Andrew Lee's normal starter is not, not going to be out there and Dylan Zegger is another rotation player not going to be out there. So interesting to see how Bethany kind of deals with the force that is this Case Western D-line. That is an incomplete pass to Raekwon Wright. The Spartans thought they might have had a turnover. That was Brian Victor uh, falling on it. But it's second and ten. You mentioned the injuries. No Isaac Withrow. No Dylan Zegers. No Andrew Lease. And no Nick Kadlesic. That's a lot missing from that case defense as Wright is tripped up on second down and 10. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage there. And if you're Bethany, one of, one of the themes of the day is going to be doing your best to stay ahead of the chains. You really want to avoid being in these third and long situations because we all know what's lurking there on the D-line. Cam Brown, number 44, senior leader. Looking for that all-time career sack record, and you know I think Bethany's O-line is going to have their, their work cut out for them today dealing with him. Five wide set. Quick toss over the middle. Not enough for the first down. And so it'll bring up fourth. The completion to Stefan Carter, the junior from Spotsylvania, Virginia, and the punting unit will come out. Fourth and three from the 28. So the Spartans coughed it up on that fumble, but they will get it right back. Anthony Fiasco to punt. Mario Rabina is back to receive. Low line drive and a short one. That'll get out of bounds around midfield. Shanked it off the right side of his foot. And Saxton in the, in the case offense will gladly take that field position. So, again, looking back at the first drive, seemed like everything was working, running the ball, passing and you know really a balanced attack just wasn't able to finish it off at the end of the end of the day so look for them to kind of continue that I think coach Debelak is is aware of the size advantage that they have pretty much across the board here against the Bethany defense and they should be able to you know open up the offense I think everything's on the table today and look for them to kind of come out and uh, put some points on the scoreboard here early from just inside Bison territory at the 49 Drew Saxton and company back to work with Hall in the backfield and four wide. Drew looking for Witte and it's picked off. Intercepted by Bethany and that'll give the ball right back to the Bison as Phil Taylor takes it. Yeah, well, looking here on the replay, it's going to be excellent coverage by Phil Taylor. Not really sure what Saxton saw there because, you know, at all points of that route, Witte was completely covered up. So, I get it from Saxon's perspective. You know, you have Chase Whitty out there, a solid athlete. Maybe throw it up and see what, what type of play he can make. But, you know, credit to Phil Taylor. Like I said, he was in position, able to get his hands on the ball. And, again, Bethany coming in, two turnovers here in the first, you know, first couple minutes of the first quarter. And this is exactly what they would want from a defensive perspective. And this is coming off of a week where Drew, who is usually so secure with the football, was intercepted three times in less than two minutes at the end of the first half. Basin. Tucking and running, sprinting out to the edge and getting very close to the yard to gain. We'll check on the spot. 
looks like a half yard shy. It'll be second and short. At least early on, I've been pretty impressed with Basin's you know speed and agility. Like I said, from the quarterback position, they they get a bad rap as maybe not being the best athletes on the team. But I mean, you look at the stats; they speak for themselves. He's going to come out here. He's going to be dynamic, and you know, every once in a while he'll throw a pass in. But the important thing for Bethany is just stay ahead of the chains, positive yardage, can't take negative plays. Another design run for Basin, and that's enough for a first down. Yeah, there are three guys who are going to get the bulk of the touches here for Bethany. One is Bazin, one is Raekwon Wright, and even though Bazin's the quarterback, he will put the ball on the ground a lot. And Hunter Klein's the third guy, so whenever Bazin goes airborne, we'll often see him targeting his 6'2 senior wideout, Hunter Klein. But for the most part, this is a ground attack led by Bazin and Wright. This is Wright. And a decent gain for him on first down. I think everyone in the conference can kind of agree. Wright's one of those guys It seems like he's been there for eight years, and that's just <laughs> that's because he played early and he played often. So really a productive career for Wright. And, you know, like you said, this is going to be a run-heavy offense between Basin, between Wright, and they're going to come at you from multiple looks, and it's going to be on Case Western to stay disciplined, and, you know, tackling is going to be of the utmost importance today. Bazin nearly intercepted. Oh boy, Kevin Chrisis thought he had his fourth touchdown, his uh, fourth interception and a pick six, but it was right through his mitts. I think I've seen him make that play maybe five times in games. I know last year in the Carnegie Mellon game, that exact play, tunnel screen to the wide receiver. Chris is great instinctual football player, is able to read it and took it for a pick six. Earlier this season, very similar play, able to jump the route. Had the right, the right idea there, right mindset, read the play perfectly, just wasn't able to complete the catch. But I think it bodes well for Case Western so far. They've really kind of forced Bethany into, you know, even though they're going to be a run-heavy offense, it's been pretty much exclusively run. So if they can limit that, that's, that's going to be a, a positive for them going forward. Third and four from the 33. Bazin will keep it. He'll cut it back. He's dropped by Brian Victor, and this is going to depend on the spot which was very close to the yard to gain, the 29. It's a first down. That's good vision and athleticism by Carlin Basin. I've actually been pretty impressed with the Bethany offensive line to this point. So if you look at the left side of their line, Tim Mickens is 245 pounds, then Benjamin Wright's listed at 206 pounds, which is you know going to be the size of most of the linebackers out there. So... Given the size disadvantage that they're at, they've been moving people, they've been you know, moving bodies and staying sound technically. It's also a young offensive line. Four of the five are freshmen. And we'll get a whistle. There's some dirty laundry on the near side. So a false start. It'll be first and 15. Perhaps the offensive line showing a bit of its youth. <laughs> Bethany led by seventh year head coach Bill Garvey. 28 and 40 in his career with the Bison. On first and 15, Bazin will get close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll set up second and about 11 here. If you're on the Case Western defense, especially for the defensive backs, knowing that it's going to be run heavy, you need, really need to stay disciplined at any time. You know, Bethany can pop one over the top to their top threat, Hunter Klein, number 19, which you'll see at the bottom of your screen here for this formation. So just stay disciplined, trust the defensive line, trust the linebackers in front of you, and you know, trust that they're going to be able to get basin on the ground here. Well, now they'll switch it up to their second quarterback. This is Dom Salinetro over the middle and caught for a first down to Abe Lyles. So Salinetro is going to be more your traditional quarterback, pocket passer, and you see it there. Solid timing, solid release. And, you know, Bethany's moving the ball so far in this case, Western defense. I, th I think they'd be pretty happy with what they've shown so far, especially given that they've mixed in a, a pass like that. I think that, that really does a lot to keep case Western's linebackers honest. This is one of the wrinkles in this offense. They do run with two quarterbacks, Basin and Salonetro. Salonetro checks out. Now they'll bring in the fullback, Kevin Thomas, to allow Basin to run with it. He slips away from a tackle and is in for six. 
to give Bethany an early lead. I'm going to give the huge assist there to number 35, Kevin Thomas, 5'6", 205 pounds. You're not going to be able to get lower than him, and he's going to be able to drive you off the ball. So you see Thomas really able to set the edge, kind of clear the path for Basin there. And, hey, Bethany has won this first quarter so far. They've got two turnovers. Offense came out, moved the ball, and kind of did whatever they want with this this Case Western defense. And if, if you're the Bethany coaches, that's exactly what you wanted. Couldn't have asked for anything more out of your guys to this point. Carlin Basin with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. And Sean Cole makes it 7 to nothing. Bison. A fumble, an interception, and Bethany, after the second case turnover, makes the Spartans pay. It's the Bison 7, the Spartans nothing. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Case has given up the ball twice on offense, and after the interception by Phil Taylor, the Bison marched down the field, and it's Carlin Basin, the quarterback, running it in for the first score of this ball game. So Case with a few things to clean up if they want to remain undefeated today and bring home the program's second PAC title. Travis Johnston on the return. Powers his way through a couple tackles out near the 34, which is, if I'm not mistaken, exactly where he returned the first kick. Yeah, he's consistent, Mr. Reliable. Just have to give my weekly shout out, middle linebacker Travis Johnston, returning kickoffs. Love it. It's unbelievable. And now they want him on offense too. They want him doing everything. Hey, it's what you run in the summer for. It's what you lift weights for. You want to you wanna be on the field and be able to help this Case Western team, you know, win the ball game. So I'm sure if you asked him, he wouldn't, wouldn't admit to being tired at all. Lifting weights and running, those are things that Travis Johnston is not unfamiliar with. Saxton on a delay to Donald Day the third, and he nearly got free but was stacked up there by Jermaine Snodgrass, the freshman. You can see Bethany's feeling it. They feel like they're in this game, and they're coming with a lot of energy. Sideline is into it, jumping up and down. Defense is showing a little bit of, little bit of life here at this point. Nice job by Snodgrass to break free of that block by Anthony Polizzi, the junior right guard, and it's second and eight. Four wide set. Day still in the backfield. Saxton in the shotgun. Steps up, spins away, looking to throw just to get rid of it. He thought about tucking and running for a second and then heaved it out of bounds to set up third and eight. And you see Chaz Blango there showing off the speed a little bit. And I mean, you know, we touched on the stat line that he had against Carnegie Mellon. He's going to be a versatile player. He'll be able to stack up against the run, be able to, you know, really get after the quarterback and pass rush. And big kid, versatile, able to really get out there and run and cause some problems for the offense. The defensive end on the right side of that 4-3 formation is the motor to this Bethany defense. Third and eight for the Spartans down 7-0. They have given the ball away twice on a fumble and an interception. Play clock winding down to one. Saxton gets it off and dumps it off. Donald Day the third. Shifts away from a couple tackles before he's wrestled to the turf at the 40. And it looks like the punting unit will come out. It's like Case Western going with a new punter today. And you could probably guess who it is. <laughs> number 22, Travis Johnston. So fully integrated into all three phases of the game here for the Spartans. What did we just say? They want him doing everything. Now they have him punting with Raekwon Wright back to receive. Wright the primary running back, kick returner, and punt returner. Johnston on the low snap. The lefty gets off a good one, 
And Wright loses the football. The Spartans fall on it. Hey, you can see that was going to be trouble. I honestly impressed with the kick by Travis Johnson. Good hang time, solid, solid kick. And hey, credit to the the special teams unit being able to get down there and kind of turn this this first quarter around. Kyle Turkovsky falling on the football, and the Spartans with phenomenal field position. Now, if your case, this is where you have to go out there. You have to realize who you are, your pedigree to this point. You have to realize that you are more talented than this Bethany defense. You haven't shown it yet. They've been the better team so far, but you have to kind of you have to assert yourself here, whether it's by through the air, on the ground. Got to find a way to get in the end zone. The Spartans 23 yards away from tying the score. Drew Saxton trying to get this offense in rhythm for the first time this afternoon. Day to his right, four wide. Saxton steps up in the pocket, tosses high for Witte. He pulls it down inside the five for a Spartan first down. Looks like Coach Teblak's going to come in kind of with a full, fully loaded backfield look here, get some more size in there, and you can tell that he's a little frustrated. He, want, he doesn't want this Bethany team hanging around at all. He wants to be able to answer back and then, you know, do what they got to do to get ahead here on the scoreboard. So there's that jumbo set again with Travis Johnston on the field, and Greg Debelak is steamed. He's going to call a timeout. Yeah, Spartans had 13 players on the field there because Mario, Mario Bina, I guess, didn't wasn't made aware of everything. And then also Coach Debelak was almost out to the hash mark. So <laughs> 13 Spartans on the field, take a timeout, and, you know, it's worth it at this point. Make sure they get things right and don't want to get too out of rhythm here with the penalty. Coach Debs heading back to the sideline, shaking his head and having a chat with Donald Day and Mario Rabina. Just communication. That's all it is. Got to make sure everybody's on the same page, especially when you're making these huge substitutions, big sub packages. So, like we said, full house backfield. You're going to have Brett Carney at one fullback spot, Kyle Tarkovsky there on the left, and then the big man, Travis Johnston, kind of in the up back position. So, I would look for them to run the ball, but I... I know Coach Debs loves his little H-back slip out, uh, slip out passing plays. So he's going to do whatever it takes here to get this touchdown. He's got, you know, you know, six points on his mind at this point. Second time today, and maybe the second time this season we've seen this jumbo set. First day with Travis Johnston as a running back. Motion man Turkovsky to the up back Johnston. Might have gotten one or two on first and goal from the four. One thing that, you know, Andrew, you and I discussed in pregame here is as, as the season goes on, Coach Deblek, he loves throwing in these little wrinkles and just kind of tinkering around, seeing what works, because like we said, they do have bigger games on the horizon. Powering his way to the end zone. Touchdown. There's Travis Johnston and the Spartans a PAT away from tying it up. That was not at all what I would call clean running or easy. And, you know, you see here on the replay, Johnson just able to kind of put his head down keep driving the legs and able to get his way into the end zone there and get the Spartans on the board. So Travis Johnston running the football, punting the football, returning kicks and tackling. He's in for the touchdown and here is Robertson Albrecht to tie. Clean hold by Ryan Coolidge and a clean kick by Robertson Albrecht, who is now 32 of 33 on PATs this year. Travis Johnston, Mr. Everything, and the Spartans tie it up. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Spartan 7, Bison 7. Carlin Bazin ran one in for Bethany. Travis Johnston... The starting middle linebacker, now playing running back, runs one in for the Spartans, and we're all knotted up, winding down in this first quarter in Cleveland. Robertson Albrecht kicks it away. Fielded by Devon McWhorter. Gets out to the 30. 
Brett Carney, another versatile player there for the Spartans, was in on the, the final rushing play, and then he's also able to get downfield on a kickoff and make a solid tackle in open space and immediately goes right to the sideline, hops in the offensive meeting. So Case Western, I think if you're on their defense at this point, you're you know a little insulted with how the, the first quarter has gone so far. The, you know, Bethany's kind of pushed you around a little bit. It's been not really through the air, mostly on the ground, but – it's no secret what's going to happen. Basin's going to take the ball. He's going to be an athlete in space, and you're just going to have to wrap up and tackle. Basin's going to hand it off this time to Greg Avent, who gets his first touch. Plunges ahead for a gain of about three on first down. It's also a rested team, and therefore a rested offense with the bye week last week. I'm sure that helps a little bit. Well, now Travis Johnston is down holding his right leg. This could really put a wrench into things. We saw how good he was punting the football for the first time this year. We've now seen him as a running back. He's returning kicks, and he's a starting middle linebacker. And he's having trouble putting pressure on that right leg. So the Spartans 7, Bethany 7. 2.50 to go in the first quarter. We'll come back, hopefully, with an update on Travis Johnston. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high-quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. 2.50 to go in the first quarter. Case and Bethany tied at 7. And the concern at the moment is for Spartan Travis Johnston. Middle linebacker now playing running back this week. Also punting this week. And he's been returning kicks all year. He just ran in for the touchdown and get a look at that touchdown as he gets to his feet after making a tackle on defense. This was the touchdown followed by the PAT by Robertson Albrecht that tied the game. And now Johnston thankfully is walking off the field with no help from any member of the training staff. So that is a good sign in the short term. We'll see if he's able to come back in this ball game though. And if not, Greg Debelak's going to have to figure out plan B. Raekwon Wright wrapped up by Colin Schuster. Third down. Really an excellent open field tackle there by Schuster. I mean, by, by no means is Raekwon White right easy to tackle in the open field. He's going to be shifty. He's got really good speed. So credit to Schuster there for kind of going inside out and you know, almost popped the ball out. But like I said, with a rushing attack like this, with the athletes that Bethany has, you're going to have to tackle in space, and you're, you're going to have to sometimes do it by yourself or else they're going to break off a chunk run. You mentioned, Andrew, that this is a statement drive for this defense that's been pushed around a little bit early on. Third and six from the 34. Pressure coming from Smith. Dump off to Avent. First down as he gets past the 40-yard line. You had Josh Smith and Cam Brown in pursuit there. And a nice job by Carlin Basin to get rid of that football. So just under two minutes to play in the first quarter, and this one kind of had fits and starts here, Andrew. A lot of turnovers, Case and Bethany tied at seven. Yeah, I think if you're Bethany, you're perfectly happy with you know, a tie ball game at this point. They just want to extend the game. They want to make it a game in the fourth quarter, see if the weather will play a factor at all, see if the turnovers can keep coming and you know, just continue what they've done so far. Stretch run to right. Ridden out by Patrick Crossy after a one-yard gain. This is starting to feel a lot like what the Case defense had to do last week against the triple option by Geneva. Yeah, and similar weather. I don't know if it's you know really showing up on camera real well. I know we have some rain specs popping up here on the, the window in front of us, but not by any means a, a bad weather game, but very similar to last week. Going to be a heavy, heavy run offense, and if you saw there on the last play, you hear the term run the alley from safeties. That's exactly what Patrick Crossy was able to do there. So him and Gabe Dory are going to, I guess have to play clean up here. Anything that leaks through, especially as Basin gets out in the open field, Dory and Crossy are going to have to do exactly what Crossy did on that play. Now Basin on second and 10. 
Tuxen goes wide. Gets away from a Colin Schuster tackle, and it's Skylar Waiters to knock him out of bounds. Gabe Dory, you mentioned, by the way, playing for the injured Nick Kandlesic. Had a pick last week, too. So I think, you know, what we've seen with this Case Western defense is guys have been, you know, they've gotten hurt throughout the year. Think about Isaac Withrow having Michael Amadio step in. So guys have had to step up, and so far they have, and that's what you want out of your defense. Third and two with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. This is Salonetro, deep ball. Knocked away by Colin Schuster, but there goes the flag. They were throwing it to the other quarterback, Carlin Basin, and Schuster never turned around. Yeah, and it's you know it's a correct call by the referees. Able to, I guess, isolate Basin on, on Schuster there one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, like you said, had never got turned around, wasn't able to play the ball at all, and it's a tough spot to be in as a, as a DB, especially on an underthrow pa underthrown pass like that. So Bethany will take it. They don't really care how they move the sticks. Penalty, wacky trick plays, running the ball 50 straight times. They'll take whatever they can get. And, you know, see them getting across midfield here again, they, they seem to have a pretty good rhythm going. And that's what they want to do with all of those run plays, set up a bomb like that. First and 10 from the 36. Salonetro over the middle to his favorite target. That's Hunter Klein, and it's a Bison first down. Past couple plays we've seen, Bethany's had both quarterbacks on the field, and, you know, obviously that brings a little bit of versatility. I, it's easy to assume that they're going to go with a double pass at some point, but whether they do or don't, it's something that the Case Western offense has to think about. And there we get our first glimpse at Klein, obviously their number one receiver, and able to go up and kind of assert himself over the middle. And they're going to be content to end this first quarter knotted at seven with the ball on the case 19. Bethany giving case all sorts of trouble. Tie ball game after the first. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. A look at head coach Greg Debelak of the Case Western Reserve University Spartans. His team has had to battle each of the last three weeks now. Narrow wins on the road at St. Vincent at home against Geneva and now this week after the first quarter tied at seven with the Bethany College Bison. And Bethany driving with the ball on the case 19. First and 10. Spartans undefeated at 7-0, 7-0. Bethany at three and four. Salonetro way too tall looking for Hunter Klein. We just got a look at the first quarter stats, Andrew, and Case held to 87 yards. They were intercepted once, coughed up one fumble. And Bethany on the flip side, 115 yards of offense. Not exactly how Case drew up the start of this game. Basin shimmies away from several tackles. He'll get past the line of scrimmage on second and 10. It'll still be third and long. Yeah, one of the, the prettier two-yard runs that you'll ever see. And just an update, looking down on the sideline, Travis Johnson is moving around, still working with the training staff, but at least at this point it seems like he's relatively healthy and will, we'll, I guess, look for his return here throughout the day. That was the big development at the start of this Bethany drive. Johnston, a starting middle linebacker, has been returning kicks this year, is punting this week as well, and is serving as a running back, and it was his rushing touchdown that tied the score. And then he went down with an injury at the start of this drive. Basin tossing left. It's going to be short of the sticks. That's Hunter Klein, and it'll set up fourth down and about one. Dom Salonetro is going to come out, and they'll go with that two-quarterback look again. It'll officially be fourth and two. And Basin's actually lined up as a tight end, so look for you know, a little misdirection here. Direct snap to Avent, and that's a first down. 
Case rarely gives up first downs on fourth down. They are tied for the best percentage of stopping teams on fourth down in the PAC this year, but Avon on the direct snap gets through and it's first and goal from the eight. Salonetro with pressure, tosses to Lyles, touchdown and Bethany back in front. Yeah, I think so far the theme for the Bethany offense has been versatility, misdirection, not by any means taking shots down the field, but they've been able to, I guess, expose some of the Case Western defenders in space with Bethany's athletes and so far, it's working out for him. I mean, you look look at the scoreboard pending the extra point here. It could be seven-point lead for Bethany, and I don't I don't think anyone on the Case Western sideline expected this, but, I mean, that's what Bethany wanted. They wanted to come in here and kind of put a shock into the Spartans. Cole hammers it through, and it is 14-7 Bethany at the start of the second quarter. Case with an opportunity on senior day to win a share of the PAC title, and Bethany is doing a pretty good job of playing spoiler. Tom. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Senior day for Case Football. Senior day for the Spartans Band as well. Great pregame performance by them. Another one coming up at halftime. Travis Johnston will not be back to receive this kick. Instead, Donald Day III in his place. The kick in the direction of Gabe Dory, who fields at the 14. Cuts it back across the middle and gets his way out near the 40-yard line. So a good return by the freshman as Case tries to come back from a 14-7 deficit early in the second quarter. And if you're Drew Saxton... I mean, we've, we touched on it before last week. Had three interceptions, and I think we figured out two, two minutes of game time. He's already thrown one here today, but the mark of a true leader on this offense and, you know, a player of his caliber is going to be able to forget about that stuff, get back into your rhythm, understand that you have better athletes than, than Bethany does, and just got to spread the ball around. Trust your receivers, trust your running back, and, you know, I don't think Saxon has any worries about putting points up today. Three wide, two in the backfield. They'll give it to... Zach Hall, and absolutely nothing to be had there. That was a fast stop by Daniel Gibson, the senior. Yeah, and that play kind of started with Bethany bringing their safety down and kind of selling out on the run. So just kind of caught Case Western in a bad play call, and credit to Bethany, they were able to, to take advantage of that. Loss of one, second and 11. This is Brett Carney, the lone man in the backfield. Another former linebacker playing on offense. Saxton running for space, and that's tipped away. Great coverage by Dadrick Vickers on Michael Wykowski. Looked like a first second there. Saxton, he had to make a choice. He could either throw the ball there to Wykowski or it looked like he had about five or six yards of open grass in front of him. Made the, I think, correct choice, and you know, credit to Vickers just being able to get a hand on it and shut down the passing game once again. So now Bethany looking for a three and out. Spartans negative one yard on this drive. Third and 11 from the 40. Saxon drops back. Three-man rush. And that's incomplete behind Michael Wykowski. Fourth down, punting unit coming out. And that is a three and out and a disappointing negative one yard drive for the Spartan offense. I think thus far I'm not... I'm not ready to say that the Case Western offense is shooting themselves in the foot. I think it's been more about Bethany coming in with the energy and just playing good, sound sound defensive football at this point. I think, like we said, they've they've kind of dominated from their defensive side so far, and it's on Case Western. you got to be able to find a wrinkle and you know trust your game plan. Robertson Albrecht now to punt it away with Travis Johnston on the sideline injured. That's a sputtering punt that will drop dead at about the 37-yard line. So now it's up to this case defense to stop a Bethany offense that has, frankly, Andrew, to this point, befuddled them. Yeah, and it looks like Travis Johnson's back out there, so that'll help alleviate 
you know, some of the issues that they've had. But, I mean, at this point, it's just been Bethany making plays. And if you're Case Western, you need to kind of put your foot in the ground, realize that you're the 21st ranked team in the country, and realize that this defense has been a big part of that ranking and that success so far. So, if I'm Bethany, keep doing what you're doing. Keep the ball in Basin's hands. Keep running the misdirection and see if you can keep this Spartans defense on their heels. Here's Carlin Basin with an empty backfield. Dropping back, Brown in pursuit, deep ball in the direction of Hunter Klein, and it was too far with Kevin Chrisis in coverage. Yeah, solid coverage there by Chrisis, and then looking back in the pocket, Bethany, probably rightfully so, is double teaming Cam Brown. They're saying we're going to make one of these other guys on the D-line beat us. So Cam Brown hasn't really made an impact to this point yet, but as we've seen several times before, he can kind of lurk around and just be in the shadows for two, three quarters, and then he'll make a, a game-changing play. So... Look for, you know, look for Case Western to, uh, I guess, try and be the aggressor here. That's, it's not been the case so far. Greg Avent gets stopped after a one-yard gain. It'll be third and long. This pass rush generally hasn't been a factor for Case today. They have the 13th most sacks per game in Division Three football, even though they have been shut out in the sack department in two different games this year. Yeah, it seems like they come in bunches. I know, especially against West Spencer and W and J, it was just a complete nightmare of a day for the offensive lines. And like we've touched on before, Bethany pretty undersized as far as lines go, and they've they've been up to the challenge so far. Third and eight, Basin rolling out, flag on the play, two flags on the play. Basin will run and only get a couple, nowhere near the first down marker with Crossy and Johnston there to drag him down. And as Basin comes away limping, we have three flags on the play. Yeah, I would think this will be some some type of a legal block, whether it's a holding or it looks like it could have been a chop block also. Head referee today, Jimmy Burks. So Case is going to accept this penalty instead of fourth down and short to medium distance. It'll be third and very long. Ball spotted on the 26. And Bethany has to get out to its own 47. And I think a lot of that decision has to do with Coach Deblek trusting his defensive line and Coach Miller's defense. I think they're, you know, they're obviously going to be able to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. One thing you do have to watch in these long situations, especially with an athletic quarterback, is the QB draw up the middle. Third and 21. They'll give it to right on a stretch run to the left. Another flag flies. Two more flags fly as right runs out of bounds. And we'll have to clean up the laundry again. And if the umpire signals any indication, it will be a holding, and it looks like Coach Deblack will decline that. This is where Case can take advantage because Bethany is the most penalized team in the PAC and Case the most disciplined team in the conference. The and I would look I would look at, at this punt block unit coming out here. I think Coach Debs is trying to get after it here. I think he wants a game change to play on special teams. Anthony Fiasco to punt it away. It's a bad punt, no block, but again, shanked off the outside of the foot by Anthony Fiasco. That's two that have not gone according to plan, and Case will get pretty good field position near midfield. I don't think anybody out here today is necessarily putting their name in for the Ray Guy Award, but, <laughs> you know, at least at this point, Case Western hasn't been able to take advantage of the, the solid field position that they've had. So we'll see if the Bethany defense is able to continue the success they've had so far, and I think it's been all levels. It's been all three levels. D-line, linebackers, and also the defensive backs. They've, they've really impressed me thus far. One of the questions in this game after those flags, are the penalties going to shoot Bethany in the foot today? Saxton rolling out, looking to throw. Gets it out to Morgan for a first down. Really solid route there by Morgan. He's actually running a go route, and he has the, the wherewithal to kind of turn around. Check in on his quarterback, see he's scrambling out his direction. He's able to break his route off and kind of run what turned into a 20-yard comeback. So credit to Saxon sticking with the play, and then credit to Morgan for being able to adjust on the fly. 
Case down by a touchdown against Bethany. Ten and a half to play in the second quarter. Hand off to Day. He's always a patient runner, but that time had nothing to work with. Wrapped up by the duo of Keandre Murphy and Mitch Cetera. Yeah, so one thing that that tells me, Keandre Murphy, number four, he's the free safety. He's already down down in the box, making tackles, one, two yards in the backfield. So, you know, for whatever reason, Bethany has the confidence to, I guess, give Case the deep ball. They're giving that up. And at this point, Case really hasn't been able to run the ball at all. So Bethany has, I guess, made that a point in their game plan, and it's worked so far. Second and ten, lots of pressure, and Saxton's just going to throw it away. It'll be third down and ten. Drew had Chaz Blango and Bryce Rohrbaugh in his grill and just wanted to get rid of the football. Yeah, so that was what we'll pretty much call a one-route play. They had Donald Day, number 25, the running back, kind of running the angle route out of the backfield where he's going to dart to the sideline and then kind of come back over the middle and hopefully get underneath the linebackers. And Bethany's D-line and linebackers just too much disruption got in the way of Saxon, threw off the timing. Now it looks like the referees are discussing whether that should be intentional grounding. And there goes the flag. Jimmy Burks, the head referee, ultimately throws it. After that zebra stripe convention. That'll bring up third and 20 for Case. Yeah, and with this long, you know, third and long to go, I'd look for number number six, our guy, Chaz Blango, to really, you know, focus on the quarterback, focus on getting home, getting around the edge there and showing the good bend and athleticism that we know he has. Case down by a touchdown, third and long at the end. We're in the middle of the second quarter. They'll dump it off to Day, and he gets met rather quickly. Dropped in the backfield, a loss will bring up fourth down. That is really nice pursuit by Phil Taylor, who had the interception earlier. Yeah, like you touched on, Taylor having a pretty good game so far, able to pick up the interception. And then on that play, he was actually, it's actually cut blocked by the receiver, Michael Wykowski. He's able to fight that off, fight through the block, and you know, make the tackle for a loss. So not only did Bethany, you know, prevent Case from getting the first down, they actually moved them back and helped with the field position too. Travis Johnston healthy enough to punt again, and Raekwon Wright will fair catch it inside the 20. So that at least is a good sign that Johnston, who had been injured on defense, is able to get back involved punting the football because he was so good the first time, another good punt this time. Yeah, I think he's fine. He's back out there. He's ready to go in all phases, and... Since Bethany offense comes out, I think, you know, the deciding factor so far has been on the ground. You look at how much success Bethany has had, and then you look at how stout Bethany's defense on the other side has been against the against the run. So, especially in a game like this where Bethany kind of wants to shorten the game, time of possession is going to be really important for them. I think they've done a great job so far controlling, at least initially, in the trenches. Carlin Basin will hand it off to Raekwon Wright. Stutter steps his way to a short gain. Adam Poltrack helping out on the stop, and it's second down. Three-yard gain for Wright. We have seen a lot of Carlin Basin and Raekwon Wright on the ground. When Bethany wants to throw the ball, they've generally gone to Hunter Klein. This is pretty much the offense we expected, and they have been giving Case fits. You know, what's a little interesting is this is the offense that we expected, and it's it's also the offense that Coach Warren Miller expected. I'm sure he game planned. I'm sure he knew coming in here. And so far, Bethany's just made, their players have been able to execute better than Cases. Low snap. They get it off to Stefan Carter. That's very close to a first down, depending on the spot. They just want to get the ball out of Carlin Basin's hand there. Are they going to move the chains? Bethany calling for a chain move. See the, the left tackle, Tim Mickens, signaling that should be a first down, and it is. Yeah, the chain guy was calling for a chain move. He was ready to go. And Bethany, you know, able to move the food field position a little bit. That first down can be can be huge when you're deep in your own area. So 
Looks like they're having some issues getting things going again. I think that was because they hadn't reset the play clock. Now Greg Avents will power his way forward. Ground game and quick dump off passes by Bethany. They haven't taken many shots down the field, but they're content to get five or six yards on a play. Yeah, they'll take it. I mean, you look at them setting up here, second and five, second and four. It's fully opens up the playbook and see them bringing in uh, Thomas, the fullback, number 35. So, I mean, the first quarter is a lot of basin. We see the running backs getting a little more involved here in, sec in the second quarter. They'll give him a cavalcade of blockers, and Gabe Dory will run him out to set up third and short. You know what else is interesting here, Andrew, is this is a Bethany team that generally does not have long drives. They are eighth in the PAC in time of possession. They've had the football a lot. Yeah, and that could really wear on a defense, especially a, a defense that's missing two of their core defensive linemen. So it's important for Case Western just to get off the field, kind of get a breather, get your offense back out there, and Bethany's been having none of that so far. Direct snap to Avent. The Spartans stack him up. Avent came out of the pile. Forward progress was stopped shy of the first down marker, and it'll set up fourth and two. Yeah, I'm a little surprised, and I've seen this, you know, in several NFL games. Everyone's, you know, whether it's safety or, you know, whatever reasoning, they've been pretty quick with the whistle, and, I mean, give Avent credit there. He kept the legs moving. He was able to break that tackle, and fortunate for the Case Western defense, the play was, was blown dead because he was gone. He had nobody in front of him there. Reed Gershenson was the man who made the stop. I think Gershenson released his grip on Avent when he heard the whistle, and that's why Avent broke free. Anthony Fiasco has had a hard time punting the football. Now we'll have to deal with a bad snap as well. Schuster in pursuit. Fiasco gets it away, gets run into, and the punt goes to about the Spartan 39-yard line. Fiasco is now slow to get up. That might be the play of the day so far. Looking at that, I mean, he he's 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. If he gets tackled, that's in his fourth down. It's where Case Weston's going to get the ball. So to even get that punt off, and then it was actually a pretty good punt, maybe his best punt of the day. Looked like Travis Johnston, by the way, in pursuit of that block attempt. Fiasco is a pretty good athlete. We've seen a lot of linebackers doing more than just playing linebacker in this game. Of course, Brett Carney's been on the offensive side for Case this year. Travis Johnston punting as well as playing running back, returning kicks and playing inside linebacker. And Anthony Fiasco, who's luckily getting off the field on his own power, albeit with a limp, is an outside linebacker and punts the football. So an athletic play from an athletic guy to get that one off and his best punt of the day despite all the pressure and the bad snap. Spartans down by a touchdown midway through the second quarter as we get a look at our crew. There's Shayna Perlman on camera as well as Brian Landers. Big thanks to our crew each and every week. Andrew Luftglass, Andrew Rossman with you in the booth. Saxton on the give to Zach Hall. There has been nothing on the ground for Case. No, and I, I was watching that play pretty pretty close on the inside. So Brett Carney was allegedly supposed to block the middle linebacker, and credit to Jermaine Snodgrass. He was able to kind of sift through the traffic, fight off the block, and you saw Carney standing there kind of wondering where everybody had went. Well, they had gone to the ball carrier. So I think the athleticism of Bethany has really shined at this point, and, you know, they have a couple bigger, bigger linebackers that – like I said earlier, might not fare real well in pass coverage, but against the run, they've been great so far. So second and nine from the Spartan zone 40. Holland Carney in the backfield. Play clock down to five. Saxton gets it off with one second. Feels the pressure, gets rid of it, and Colt Morgan has it for a first down. No fun getting beaten up by the 6'3", 260-pound defensive tackle Daniel Gibson, but Drew Saxton hangs in there. Yeah, and you see on the replay, Gibson's been a force on the inside. They had the right guard was supposed to block him. The running back was supposed to help clean up, you know, whatever was left, and Gibson's kind of just walking forward and saying, I'm going this direction. You need to get out of my way, and it's it's been affecting the pocket so far. It's been affecting Saxton. You can see that on how the passing game hasn't really been able to take off. 
his power must really help Chaz Blango on the outside get the edge. Yeah, anytime that you have two guys, two out of the four year defensive linemen really causing havoc, it's going to be pretty easy for the others to, to have an impact as well. Saxton knocked away, looking for Chase Witte. And Dadrick Vickers has come up with a couple nice pass breakups. Second down. Looking at the Bethany defense, we've, we've touched on their size going across the board, 5'11", 5'7", 6 foot, 5'7". And they've been up to the fight so far. You know, they got that dog in them, and they've been able to, to handle their business. That's to Rabina as the Spartans run a little bit more of a hurry-up look. We saw that for years under Rob Kuda. Drew Saxton a little bit last year ran some hurry-up. I think they've been slowing the offense down a bit for him this year. But they got to the line quickly on the last play. Third and seven now. Case's offense has just not gotten into gear this afternoon. Down by a touchdown. Saxton drops back. Looking left. Finds Witte. And he's going to go down about three yards shy of the first down marker, but in no man's land. I yeah, think of the replay, we're going to see a little bit of a missed call. Yeah, you can see the Bethany defensive lineman with you know, getting his hands into Saxon's face mask. So credit to Saxon, able to get the pass off and get positive yardage out of it. It looks like the offense is going to stay here, stay on the field here for Coach Debelak. Yeah, this is the area of the field where we're used to seeing Case go for it, and they will on fourth and three from the 40. Carney is the lone man in the backfield. Four wide, and it looks like Greg Debelak wants a timeout here to talk things over as the play clock goes down to two. Yeah, it was definitely it was off schedule. Whitty's moving around. Carney wasn't really wasn't really sure of the play. So big play at this point in the game. Like you said, Bethany's been the better team so far. Coming into it, you wouldn't have wouldn't have expected that at all. And all credit to their coaching staff being able to get these guys ready to come out and right from the start really punch Case Western in the mouth. And the Spartans haven't really been able to respond. Defenses look disjointed and confused. Offense has kind of been stuck in first gear, and with that being said, it can all change quickly. It can all change with one play over the top here. Maybe Zach Hall breaks off a big run, and Case has just got to, like I've touched on before, realize who they are, what they've accomplished, what they're capable of, and they should be fine going forward. But they have this Bethany team standing in front of them, and they're, they're clearly up for it today. Case has been pretty tough to stop this year on fourth down. Fourth best conversion percentage in the PAC at just under 50%. They'll have fourth and three from the 40. Same look with Carney in the backfield and four wide. Case down by a touchdown. 3.21 to go in the first half. Saxton eyeballing left side. It was over Witty, but caught for a first down by the man behind him, Colt Morgan. Yeah, and I don't think anybody really cares who it was supposed to go to. You could argue Witty, you could argue Morgan. Point is, Saxton with a big fourth down pickup. Great look at that on the replay, too. And a quick play run by the Spartans as they get back to the line of scrimmage, and that one's too low for Morgan. But on that first down throw, Morgan coming back, diving, and getting his hands somehow under that football. That was a phenomenal play. Yeah, it can be a tough play when you have your elbows on the ground there. The ground can really play, play a factor. you often able to get two hands on it, just not able to complete it. So it speaks to his, his hand strength and his concentration, and like I said, that's a, a big play for the Spartans offense. Now they got to capitalize on it. Second and 10 now from the 27. Saxton looking over the middle. Dumps it off to Mario Rabina. Pushed out around the 10 as he came streaming across the middle of the field. But in behind the play, Joshua Blamer is down. Spartan left tackle is on the turf around the previous line of scrimmage. 3.01 to go, first half, case down by a touchdown as the training staff tends to Blamer. So case driving, trying to tie this one up down 14-7. We'll be back. Inspire. 
It's Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Left tackle Joshua Blamer just getting help to his feet after being injured on the last play. A first down toss to Mario Rabina as the Spartans drive, and they'll have to shift things around on the offensive line. Looks like we'll see Josh Schlichting coming in at left tackle. The rest of the O-line remains intact with Derek Klontz at left guard, Chase Strayer at center, Anthony Palizzi at right guard, and Dee Goes at right tackle. First and 10 from the 12. Case trying to tie this score. Saxton has Hall in the backfield and four wide. And there's movement on the line. Bethany thinks it's a false start. Certainly appeared that way. That's on the right tackle, D. Ghost. And coming in, we expected Bethany to you know, not commit penalties, but we just knew that they had a history of that. And looking at their stats on the season so far, it's been Case Western shoot them, shooting themselves in the foot. Bethany's been relatively clean at this point, and you know, it's just another reason that they've been able to have success on the defensive side. Case has given up the fewest yards per game on penalties this year in the PAC. Bethany the most. But Case with a big false start there to drop it to first and 15. And are the Spartans going to have to call a timeout here? Yes. With the play clock winding down, the Spartans have to burn their third and final timeout of the first half. As for whatever reason, they're not clicking on offense right now. And you can see some of the frustration coming out in the coaches, the players, and, you know, as always, the fans are happy to chime in and voice their frustrations as well. And on the flip side, you look over at the Bethany sideline. They're engaged, jumping up and down. You can see the offense over there. Basin's feeling himself. And, I mean, they they have a right to be excited and, you know, be confident about what they've shown so far. They've They've come in. They haven't at all been intimidated by this Case Western team. And, They've been able to produce on the field so far. Up 14-7 here, going into half. Uh, they will be getting the ball for the second half. So, you know, if they can go in with a lead and then come out and put some more points on the scoreboard, they would really, really get some momentum going. They have some pretty good wins this year, too. So don't sell this 3-4 and four team short. They edged out Geneva 27-24, then beat Carnegie Mellon 23-19, both those wins at home. They really don't have a statement win on the road this year, but they're up by a touchdown here at DeSanto Field on Senior Day with Case a win away from its second PAC title. First and 15 from the 17. Carney in the backfield and four wide for Case. Saxton will give to Brett Carney, the former linebacker. Looked like he got four to set up second and 11. Yeah, there was just initially looked like a pretty decent hole. Looked like you had a chance at six, seven, eight yards, and then it closed as soon as it opened. And it's a testament to the, the Bethany run defense, and we knew they were going to be stout in that regard coming in. Under two minutes to go in the first half. Case trying to even the score. In a first half that has not gone their way. Saxton looking left, batted away. Boy, what a game today by Phil Taylor. Third down and 11. That pass intended for Mario Rabina. Yeah, and that's kind of Rabina's specialty down there, the little slot ins and outs, and usually able to get pretty good separation. Phil Taylor's having none of it on that play. So third and 11 from the 13. Case very well might try to pick up five or six here and go for it on fourth down in this area of the field. Saxton, looking left, fade to Morgan, jump ball, touchdown! That, I would think, would be highlight number one if I'm trying to describe Colt Morgan in a nutshell. 
Saxon knows he's got the big man on the outside, able to throw it up. And Morgan's just going to say, hey, I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger, and I can jump higher than you. And you'll see him high point the ball here. Really speaks to his background bas er, background in basketball, and he's able to go up and get the rebound and put some points on the, score on the scoreboard for the Spartans. And now Case, a PAT away from tying the score with 90 seconds to go in the first half. It's up to Robertson Albrecht. And he gets the job done. So maybe not how you drew up this first half if you're Case. On senior day at DeSanto Field, a win away from a share of the PAC title, but they'll hope that that drive gets the offense clicking as Colt Morgan puts himself within one receiving touchdown of tying a case record and ties the score against Bethany. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Colt Morgan with his 30th career receiving touchdown as the Case Western Reserve Spartans even with Bethany College 14 all. Morgan on a jump ball in the left corner. And Case and Bethany all even with 90 seconds to go in the half. Robertson Albrecht skims one along the turf, fielded at about the 35 yard line by Phil Taylor. And he is wrestled down by the freshman Gabe Dory. Case and Bethany just about even on total yards in this ball game, but I'll tell you the stat that is jumping off the page at me right now, Andrew, and that is the rushing yard disparity. Yeah, and it's not like Case Western can't run the ball. I think coming in there, we've considered them a pretty balanced offense. They just haven't been able to put it together here on the ground today, and you know it's going to be on Donald Day and Zach Hall to just be able to find something, give them anything, and then that'll really open up the ball, the ball field for Saxon and Morgan and the other guys on the outside. Carlin Basin, the quarterback on first down, gets one. A ground-centric attack by Bethany. We expected that. Case likes to be a little bit more balanced. They now have four running packs to choose from with Travis Johnston being added this week. Toss low for Hunter Klein, and it'll set up third down with Michael Amadio in coverage. Uh, you've got Hall, you've got Day, you've got Brett Carney, and you've got Travis Johnston. And one of those guys, or some combination of those guys, going to have to get it figured out in the second half. Just 28 yards on the ground on 10 carries for Case. And as you mentioned, Andrew, if they can get something sorted out on the ground, that'll really open things up for the passing game. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a reason the coaches strive for balance on offense. It just it makes the rushing attack better. It makes the passing better. And unless you have someone like Basin on the other side, you're probably going to need to be able to do both phases. Stefan Carter with a nice move to get around Johnston and pick up the first down just past midfield. Under a minute to go in the first half. Case has none of its timeouts left, and Bethany will burn its first. You think back to some of the miscues, some of the procedural stuff that Case Westerns had early in this, this first half. They have no timeouts left, Bethany at all three. So even if, you know, even if the Spartans had gotten that stop there, I would have thought Bethany was going to run the clock out. Bethany in control here. We know they're going to get the ball for the second half, but I would think that they're going to be pretty aggressive in trying to at least get some form of a lead, even if it's a field goal here going into halftime. Do you think we see more of Dom Salinetro, their passing quarterback? It's tough. I, if I were, you know, in their shoes, I might put both of them on the field just because it, it offers so much versatility. I think Basin's probably a good enough athlete where you can roll him out and he's going to have the decision-making skills being a veteran to either throw the ball out of bounds or, you know, continue to scramble and be able to be able to stop the clock and get out of bounds on his own. So I would, I don't think they're tied to that fact, but I think it helps. And at least initially it looks like they're going to bring both of them back out here. 
Dom Salinetro, number 12. Carlin Basin, number 7. Both listed as quarterbacks. Salinetro will line up at quarterback here with Basin next to him. They'll fake the give to Basin, toss out left to Raekwon right, and he'll sprint out of bounds to stop the clock. Just shy of a first down, but it's second and short with 48.7 seconds left in the half. That's perfect. That's exactly what Bethany wants to do. Get seven, eight yards, get out of bounds. Barely any time has come off the clock. If you're Case Western, you got to know what they're trying to do. you got to protect the sidelines, stay over the top, keep everything in front of you, and do whatever you can to get into into the half with this score still tied. For reference, Sean Cole's longest field goal of the year is 44 yards. Reverse. It's fumbled. Salonetro falls on it, and Cam Brown was all over it. There he is. Can't fool a big man. And I think they might have had a sliver of hope there if that would have gotten around Cam Brown, but that's a, that's a big if, obviously. Disrupting the play, disrupting the timing of that, and Bethany's got to take a step back, call a timeout, and see what they can come up with. That sets up third and nine. So you go from second and two to third and nine from the 45. A little gimmicky play, and it really didn't pay off for Bethany. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't really – I don't like it. I think you save save that for the second half, not not at the end of the first half here where you're driving the ball. You haven't had any issues. I thought Bethany came out with a good game plan on this drive, and they are already moving it. I don't necessarily agree with throwing in the trick play there. I think just kind of stick to what you've, what you've been doing and – they have another opportunity here. You see 37 seconds there on the clock and, you know, one time out left at this point. I think the whole playbook's open. I think you got to trust your guys and, like I've been saying, do whatever you can to at least get those three points. If you're Bill Garvey, knowing what Bethany has run offensively today, what are you calling on third and nine? A rollout. I'd probably roll out with Basin or Salonetro, and it looks like Salonetro's going to be back out there, so he'll at least get the snap. I think Basin's an obvious choice. Uh, for an athlete, you want to get in the ball in his hands. You also have Klein. We haven't heard from him from in a couple drives, but he's always lurking out there. We know that he's going to be their go-to guy here on third down. Their six-foot-two top wide receiver target at the bottom of your screen. Salonetro to pass out wide to Basin, who hauls it in, but they only get one yard, and it'll set up fourth down and eight with the clock running. One timeout left for Bethany, but they're going to let this thing tick. Do they want one more home run play before the end of the half? Bill Garvey's right next to the official on the far side. He may call a timeout with about two seconds left. It looks like that's what's going to happen. 4.8 seconds left. And they'll set something up you'd imagine here for some sort of home run to get the ball in the air in the direction of the goal line. There's no way you stop the clock if you're just going to take a knee. So something's coming, and Case has to play some prevent. Yeah, and 4.8 seconds, not enough time for them to run a play that would just get the first down. Obviously going to take a shot to the end zone. The one thing I will add, and this is kind of one of the new new fads that we've seen. I've seen it in a couple of NFL games. The Chiefs were able to hit this against the Cowboys last year. Traditionally, you think you just bomb it to the end zone, and you know, without knowing what Salonetra's arm talent is, he may or may not be able to get it there. I know what some teams have started to do is they'll put three wide receivers on one side, run them all downfield, and they turn into lead blockers. They'll throw a slant underneath. You've already got three guys running their guys completely out of the play, and that underneath kind of slant route can turn into a 40-yard gain. So just something to keep in mind. It looks like Basin is going to at least take the snap from quarterback, and the other obvious issue is he can run all over the place, and he's shown his athleticism so far. So Case Western just got to tackle on this play. That's all. Basin dropping back, pull track under pressure or with the pressure. The toss over the middle for Abe Lyles was tipped and incomplete to end the first half. Dead even after the first in DeSanto Field in Cleveland. On senior day, Case and Bethany tied at 14. 